maybe some words about us uh, at the beginning. Actually, we are plan uh, panels with four members, but two of them have the random accidents. Everything is okay, so uh, don't care. But uh, I think that we'll be have kind of format like uh, interview, uh, because the real expert of uh, VR market is the Pavel, Pavel Sobik, CEO of Spectral Games. Uh, studio who is focusing uh, on VR production. Uh, my name is Andrzej, mm, I'm Managing di Director of Inner Value and uh, I'm involved in gaming and VR sector from point of view investors or uh, advisors uh, in area of communication. Inner Value is a company which is cooperating with uh, Polish uh, gaming company which are listed on Warsaw Stock Exchange or preparing to uh, entering uh, of them. So, in our discussion, we will try uh, to approach uh, to trends on the VR market, but also uh, approach uh, condition of uh, financing on the Polish market, but not, also, uh, not only uh, this. Uh, some kind of journey in, in the history, <laughs> some kind of journey uh, to the future. So I think uh, that even that our uh, panel, uh, it's not so crowded, but uh, it will be interesting and uh, fruitful uh, for you. After our small interview, we also invite you to um, asking us, Pavel or me, uh, for any issues connected with uh, VR market or uh, gaming. Paolo, thank you once again uh, that you are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Mm, you know, I want to start at the beginning uh, from the journey in, in, to the history because my VR experience uh, was starting, business VR experience uh, was starting to, if I remember, 2017, mm, and in this time uh, was a quite good time for uh, gaming in, in Poland. Uh, I remember, the, for example, CD Projekt was before the, uh, the, the peak, uh, as soon like uh, gaming studio um, and as well uh, like um, stock company. Mm, and uh, the same was in the VR. I remember that uh, any investors, analysts, um, specialists in the report saying, uh, yeah, VR, it's not uh, developed like PC uh, game at this time, but the boom is very near, yeah? Mm -hmm. They have mean that the boom was uh, on 2018, 2019. And after this, after the seven years, we know that, uh, yeah, market is still developing, it's still uh, growing, but the pace of this uh, growing, uh, it's not so fast, it's not so, it wasn't so, uh, so impressive uh, to, this, uh, to this moment. So what happened in, in, in this period? Why this expectation was so, uh, was so high? It's, matter of price of equipment, of headset, or any, any other uh, reason uh, which will make it difficult to adopting uh, VR market in mass. What's, what's your opinion about yeah. this history? The future should be here right now, but as we know, VR is still a niche. Uh, but let's look back, as yeah. you said, in the history. 2012, Oculus was founded by Palmer Lucky. Uh, 2014, Facebook, then Facebook uh, bought it, and 2016, the first uh, VR headset from Oculus came to the market. It was the Oculus Rift. Yeah, so that's where you start. Uh, yeah, and then 2016, also the first PlayStation VR came to the market. Uh, why is VR still the niche? There are a few reasons for that. I think that top and top uh, problems with VR is that uh, there's high entry cost for the consumer and for every uh, company that wants to produce the headset. 
there is problem with um, there is problem with the content that VR brings with itself. It's early on. It's like the early PC adoption mm -hmm. for the gaming. Uh, it, it's the same level. Uh, the motion sickness that people have using uh, the VR headset. It's not for everyone. You need to use it very often to get off for, for the motion sickness. Second, uh, second or my main problem connected to the motion sickness is that some of us are a bit lazy. VR playing requires that you move. You need to do some fitness because it's, it comes with the immersion. VRs bring you to the virtual world like you are really in, the, in this world, in this game. So you can uh, go and touch every objective, you can move, you, you can interact with every NPC and so on and so on. Uh, the problem is also as well as for the hardware. The VR headsets are small, they need to be, be small, but it goes with not so strong uh, hardware. The PCs, the consoles, are in the size of a shoebox or bigger, and they are connected to big screens like TVs, monitors, and so on. And they are connected to the electricity. And the VR headset has its all in itself. So he has the dis displays in itself, he got the battery in itself. So the weight of the head, uh, headset is also a problem. When you use it, you've, you're, you're, you have, you've got headaches because it's very, very tough to use it more than one or two hours. Then let's focus on the content. There are, of course, some very high popular games like Gorilla Tag, uh, like Beat Saber, like Assassin's Creed, that the latest production, but it's still uh, is like one or two percent of the whole gaming market uh, as a whole. Uh, so that's another problem. Um, the people, even if they buy the VR headsets, like Oculus 2, it's the most sold headset to this time. Uh, like in 2021, it was selling so good as uh, Xbox or PlayStation 5, so it was really, really good. But the main problem is retention. So many people have VR headsets, but are not using it, like on daily basis or even monthly basis. So how many headsets will be active, are active uh, now on the world? Uh, do you know some it estimation? Because I heard uh, in the last uh, Omnia uh, mm -hmm. report, uh, which is quite uh, pessimistic, quite bearish, uh, towards uh, VR market, uh, they counted that will be uh, 25 uh, million headsets uh, active in the world. It's very optimistic uh, report, but the exact number uh, depends on the media or, or the report that presents it. Uh, mainly, we are thinking that till today, as many as 35 million of Oculus headsets are sold, and uh, at the sales number, something between 10 and 30 percent are active, and five or eight percent are daily active users. So that's not enough. So 35 uh, million sales is a quite good uh, figure. So the Problem, in number of challenge. sales, yes. In number of sales, yes. But in numbers of active users, yeah. it looks a bit different. Yeah, you can't have many challenges uh, which uh, appear on uh, VR market, and we know about this. Mm -hmm. uh, but when are you started uh, working on VR production? It's a few years ago. It's a long time ago. Uh, what's your expectation? Uh, because you know, every time, if you are planet, if you are want to say uh, that some accidents will be unpredictable, we're saying for five, ten years. Mm -hmm. So, what's your expectation of five, ten years uh, ago? What? Uh, my expectations were that it would be uh, like maybe the fourth device for gamers. Because when you look at the market, there are 
but your this, expectation at 2015, 2016? Yeah, that, that, was, that was my expectation. Okay. Then in decades, so in 2026, VR headset will be third or fourth device for the gamers. It's still, today, it's fourth or fifth device that the gamers use. It's PC, it's smartphone, tablet, if someone has a tablet and consoles, and then the VR headsets. Uh, as I said at the beginning, VR is still a niche, but it's a niche that is evolving. Slowly, but slowly, but it's evolving. The main problem is with the technology. If we get uh, a headset that would be light, that would have uh, 8K uh, display, and would weigh like 500 grams, and would be under $1,000 or $500, then we will be heading to the mainstream of digital entertainment. With this needs to come better content. And with better content, I mean uh, well-known IPs for the gamer. Because when you look at the uh, VR libraries, game libraries, there are many titles that nobody knows. And few of them, like uh, Beat Saber, made a huge success. Mostly, we need uh, titles with well-known IP, like Assassin's Creed, uh, like uh, Medieval Dynasty, and others. And uh, we are still waiting on GTA. Meta announced it, but we don't know anything. And the VR gamers need a well-known IP, because for now, VR is for VR enthusiasts, for core gamers. Still, still yeah. yeah, still. It's evolving, the number is getting higher and higher, but uh, it not, it's not a mainstream product. Okay, so uh, let's back to the technology, because you uh, remarked very important uh, things, that the technology is challenged, but if technology is challenged, the, the, the second ch ch challenge is uh, uh, investments, yeah? Yes. Because yes. how many... Actually, I'm, I think, uh, what can I uh, notice, what can I uh, observe, that only Meta is truly interested in developing uh, uh, VR. Why uh, the situation is uh, like, like, like this? Because it's very cost-engaging. So you need to have a lot of earnings, a lot of cash on your bank account to afford investing in VR like building your own structure, like building your own st store and a whole ecosystem. Many tried, like Pico from ByteDance, uh, and they are now heading to the headset like uh, Apple Vision. So they are heading more for the work environment, not for gamers. Then we had a PlayStation that February last year uh, made uh, to the market, released to the market, the PlayStation VR 2. But as we could read in the news yesterday, they will, there will be layoffs in PlayStation. Mm. And for example, they are closing whole London VR team. So they cannot afford investing so many resources as Meta can. And if you look, when Meta started to investing in virtual reality, it was 2014. 2016 was the first headset released to the market. Then 2019, 2020, 2023. I don't uh, mean the um, Oculus Pro because it's not for the gamers, it's mostly for work environment. And Meta has, I don't know if they announced it publicly or it was a leak to the media, but they got the whole technology roadmap to 2027, and as far I know, they've got the technology roadmap even 2030. So they are investing in the headsets, and they will be a new headset every year or year and a half. Okay, so it's a long-term investition, so not everybody, even the biggest uh, companies, technology companies in the world could decide to exactly. make this long-time uh, uh, investments uh, to explain for, for, for our audience, uh, even the biggest uh, company have the shareholder, have the investor, and should uh, showing result every quarter, not only exactly, every, uh, exactly. Yeah. But if you look at the media, the last news was that the reality labs, so the meta division working on VR, 
is burning cash because like this year they got something like 15 billions of losses. But it's not just the ecosystem, just the games and just the headsets. They, uh, the mo they are spending the most at R&D and M&A. So they are, they, they are buying the companies that work for VR, like in the hardware space and in the software space, yeah. so games and so on. So Meta is really, really investing. They have a long-term plan for it. And I think they will succeed, but they need a decade or some, maybe something more. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you because even uh, investors was very skeptic uh, at the beginning when the um, Meta transformed more to the metaverse and to VR world. Mm, so it's not so uh, easy at uh, reality showing us. <laughs> exactly. But let's back to the uh, content because you are starting saying about it, we talking a lot about headset, but the, I think that the content, the quality of uh, content yeah. um, is uh, more important. And you have also uh, working on quality of content, but you, you are one of the player of, on, on the global market, but still you have the chance uh, to know about your pipeline, about your uh, plans, uh, medieval dynasty settlement, yeah. settlement uh, it's uh, going to uh, debut soon. So, uh, what's your expectation about this uh, production? My expectation of this production is firstly that the players will love it because we are not making a port one to one, we are making a spin off of the highly successful flat game Medieval Dynasty from Render Cube. Uh, in the medieval dynasty universe. So we've got something in common, but the map is new, the story is new, there is a, a, lot, a lot of new things, and it's made for VR. What most people don't know, that for VR, the games need to work in 72 frame rate. So even games on PlayStation can uh, run on 30 or 60 frame rate, so it's really, really hard. And our game will be the first open world survival, economic, and RPG game for that. So we need to learn a lot about optimizing our game for the most sold headset, so MetaQuest 2, because yeah. on Quest 3 there is no such problem. But for Quest 2 we need to learn a lot, lot of things, how to make it. So it looks quite good and the players will have fun. Our game is quite long for VR as well, because most of the VR games that are today on the Meta Library or other VR library, uh, you need like five or six hours mm -hmm. to, to finish them. And our game is like 16, 18 hours. So yeah, you can spend uh, more time in this game. And we've got to play uh, types of games. So you can play the adventure mode with story and quest, and you can play it with sandbox. So you can play it what you want, how you want, and do whatever you want there. Okay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Render Cube uh, selling the 1,500,000 uh, copies. 1,750,000. Uh, seven, seven. So yeah. it's quite a big community. Yeah. I know this is a, a very difficult question and uh, nobody uh, like this uh, question, but what's your expectation? Which result will be good, very good, and which, which result will be successful uh, uh, for you? Because you know uh, how big is the community, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah I know how the, the community is big and we are talking about totally different numbers. Uh, I mean, in VR market, you can count it as success if you will sell like 80,000 or 100,000 copies in a year. So, so yeah, it's totally uh, different. Less than 10 percent. Yes, uh, less yeah. than 10 percent, exactly. Less than 10 percent. But uh, you need to notice, as I said, the, the user experience with VR headset is like 30 minutes to one hour. And on the PC or console, you can play how long you have time or how long do you like. So the VR is a totally different market. So 80,000 copies to 100 copies will be yeah, a quite good success. So uh, remind me the day of the debut. The release of our game will be the 28th of March okay. this year. 
so 30 days <laughs> yeah the very important uh, a very important day and I think that will be also important day for um, maybe Polish investors because you said that you decided about entering of uh, um, a stock market mm -hmm. um, about uh, entering stock exchange uh, after the debut after the releasing uh, mm -hmm. of medieval uh, dynasty on uh, VR and it's uh, very interesting because mostly in Poland, uh, companies, uh, video games uh, st studios, uh, doing the different. They creating expectation mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, before uh, releasing, and on this expectation, trying to uh, sell shares uh, to, to, to investors. You choose the um, another way, another direction. Why? Because I think it would be fair, really, really fair. You, you will notice if we are successful or, we, or if we can make good games, quality games, and if player likes our games. If yes, you can invest in our company. And I think that's, yeah, that's the fair Definitely. Reason. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree with you, and uh, I think that uh, uh, it's... Uh, enough uh, on, on Polish market and New Connect on yeah. the main Warsaw Stock Exchange that uh, uh, we have such a uh, situation. I can I say that even the uh, Warsaw Stock Exchange internally uh, introduction some kind of um, soft law. It's, it's not a regulation, it's some soft law that they are trying to uh, and they are trying to um, prolong the process of uh, registration sh uh, shares uh, uh, to the moment of releasing of mm -hmm. uh, of uh, game, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, they if learn. you don't if you don't know uh, on the in in Polish on new connect market because uh, most of uh, game studios are not, uh, listed not only on the uh, main market. Uh, we have also a uh, quite popular uh, alternative market and uh, in this case uh, companies attracted uh, money before uh, before listing and uh, only after this uh, Warsaw Stock Exchange uh, giving a green light um, to listing. Um, okay, so maybe I... Um, uh, maybe I ask you um, in, uh, from another side uh, how many copies you should sell to decide to uh, entering uh, public market. I wouldn't decide it in the numbers of copies. Uh, I would like mostly decide it, or I with my shareholders yeah, would decide it uh, in terms of the quality of the games, how players like it and if the company can finance itself like for one or two next projects. And for me, that are the uh, lines of entry to the public stock market or talking to a bigger uh, investors from the gaming market. It's easy to create or to sell expectations, but it's harder to sell facts. Mm -hmm. If you are talking about uh, finance, you have uh, strategic investors, but uh, general, uh, when are you observing a uh, market? Uh, how alternative, how options uh, at now have VR studios, uh, not only you, but, but the other in attracting uh, capital for, for development? What was, was the option? It's uh, like crowdfunding. You can gather the capital from crowdfunding. You can gather the capital from private investors. You can go to public market uh, with IPO of your company, or you can talk to bigger studios. Uh, like in terms, we will do your IP and bring it to the VR market and become our biggest shareholder or something like that. Okay, and every this option. Uh, still working uh, today? I don't take and advise the crowdfunding option. It's, I don't think it's something for us. 
the best option would be if we would have the financing for one or two next projects from selling our games just like this. And honestly, for me personally, I don't know what my shareholders would prefer, but for me, the better option is to have one big uh, shareholder for, from the market that, that can help you with his knowledge. That would be the better option. But yeah, every option is on the table. I think it's the most properly direction that business uh, should financing, but by selling products. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, of course we're living in uh, such time after, uh, before COVID, uh, mm -hmm. everybody uh, dreaming and thinking that business should financing by uh, money from investors, but yeah, the evaluation is the most properly by selling uh, project. Mm, actually, when we can stop um, and uh, talking about uh, future, future of uh, of market, because uh, at the beginning you said quite uh, pessimistic. May, maybe not prospect, but you counted very uh, challenges. How do you think uh, it will be developed in the, I think, near term? Uh, near term, I mean one, two years and uh, five years. Uh, how will be developed VR market? Because we want to answer on mm -hmm. our main uh, question in our topic, when the VR market will be part of the mainstream of uh, gaming? Not fast, not, not really fast. In terms of one or two years, I think nothing will change drastically. Uh, it, was, it will be just evolving. It still will be a niche, but an evolving niche. Uh, so it would be not problematic, but if you get good IPs and good developers that can bring the IP for VR specific, so you will be growing. Uh, in the five years, the headsets will be better, the games will look um, better, they will run faster, the uh, customer experience will be better, the motion sickness will be lower, but VR till this time won't be the mainstream. To be the mainstream, VR would need, as I said before, um, better hardware, uh, better IPs and well-known IPs, and then Mm, VR would need that one of the devices that are before VR would disappear or would be uh, changed for something else. Like now uh, in the VR community we are talking about that maybe someday uh, our smartphone will change to smart glasses. Today, it's hard to believe in that, but maybe in five, six years, it will be, yeah, common. Actually, uh, at now, uh, I meet uh, very often um, companies from such call real economic, uh, traditional part of uh, economic, uh, educational company, company which are producing military system, mm -hmm. uh, which are using augmented reality and virtual reality also. And uh, it was very interesting that, for example, in army, uh, even our uh, army in, in Polish, uh, popularity of uh, VR is still uh, growing. Uh, weeks ago, I have, only, uh, I have also interested in um, call uh, with my friends from the United States, and uh, she's talking parallel with uh, Sam, uh, who served the United States uh, Army, and uh, you're focusing now at mm -hmm. uh, VR uh, project in the yeah. United States Army. So I, I think that uh, using of this um, solution uh, more broadly uh, in the other sectors could help also exactly. for in gaming uh, market. It's a very good example with the military. Do you know when GPS was released from the military to the public? When? I don't remember. It was 1990. Okay. So from 1990 to 2005, I think it was 
15 years, so GPS become common, like in our cars, in our... Internet is the same example. Example, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we need time. Some technology needs to adopt. It needs to become better and better and better, but it doesn't happen overnight. It needs time. And I think with VR, it's the same thing. Maybe quite optimistic, my son, he's 12, asking uh, for headset uh, VR mm -hmm. for the birthday. It will be one day after your release. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so I would like to uh, buy him uh, for a birthday uh, headset VR. Yeah, great idea. <laughs> my son is also 12 and he plays on my oh. headset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you need to watch that he, the, the, the kids shouldn't play more than one hour. So uh, you need to watch out for them. So uh, it should be a good uh, signal for the sector. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, that's the uh, end of uh, our part uh, discussion, so we'll be glad to hear your opinion about this topic or maybe your, your questions uh, about this topic or other yeah. connected to the game. Hey. Uh, so, the question that always bothers me uh, for the recent few years is um, actual, uh, how we call them, uh, like Unreal and Unity uh, game engines and uh, their ability to... Uh, Unity. For, for the people, yeah, to, <laughs> to, to start making uh, yeah, VR projects. As I know in the past, uh, Unity was like the... Uh, like easier to go to VR scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now Unreal uh, evolved it uh, so much that uh, I see that games are popping up uh, made on Unreal. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the future of a game engines? Not uh, uh, making your own engine for VR, but using the already made packages. Okay, for now, uh, I think that uh, Unreal Engine is good for PC VR games or PlayStation games because there is, the hardware is much, much stronger. Uh, for standalone headsets like Oculus, Unity, only Unity, because it's easier to optimize games for the headsets, really. We are making Medieval Dynasty on Unity, it's an open world game, and it's a lot, lot easier for the optimization, because maybe for the development some things would be easier on Unreal, mm, but you need to have very well optimized game. Uh, Meta requires 72 frames per second for a game to, to, to run on, on the headset. And with Unreal, it's a problem. Like, you know Bulletstone VR the game? You heard about the release and how it went. It, it got some problems. And it's all because the Unreal engines and the crashes and the optimizations problems with it. Uh, also, what do you think about the future? Uh, do players will need PC still for running VR games or uh, mobile VR is uh, more valuable? I think when the technology will go further, it wouldn't matter if you choose Unity on Unreal to play, but we are like 10 years before that. Uh, what about hardware? Uh, I mean, do we still need PC to get a proper experience in VR? Or it's already possible to get it from just MetaQuest or something like that? I think uh, MetaQuest 3 is enough to get a proper uh, yeah, feeling of playing. You can found, find really good games, good looking games. It will not open world games, but yeah, semi open world or cl in closed locations. And the games look really, really good. And the optimization is quite, quite good, yeah. But to play a big game in open world or with uh, great graphics on Unreal Engine on standalone headsets, seven to 10 years without the PC. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Do you have a VR headset? Uh, yes. I have uh, all Oculus Rift. Okay. So I still haven't tried Oculus uh, Meta Quest or something. Okay. But as I know, my friend is uh, using it and he's most of the time plugging it to the PC. 
Okay, uh, so he used this Steam VR, yeah, ecosystem. You should definitely try because the jump from Oculus Rift to Quest 2 or even Quest 3 is like, well, like going to the future. So try it. Any other questions, suggestions, comments? Oh, okay. okay, please. Hello. Hello. Um, which genres of like VR games you find more perspective or like more popular okay. within players? Uh, like for now, if you look on the Meta Store library or even any VR library. The most common genres are shooters and horror games. So definitely not those two, because if you look at the comments, the gamers are, uh, are having more than enough of this type of game. Now are su survivals on the top. And like in the near future, like two to five years, there will be more co-op games, like sandboxes game, chili games that you won't rivalize with someone. You just will make some cozy things with your friends to relax. Uh, so maybe not survival, but economic games, uh, RPG games, adventure games. Definitely not shooters or uh, horrors. Can I ask? <laughs> Go ahead. What is your target group? Average age? One second, please. What is your target group? Target. Target group? Uh -huh. Target yeah. group. Uh, what, what, com kind of what kind of community? What kind of community? Mostly, um, we've got two types of community because I don't think they are... We can mix them together now. The first target is the um, players that played the flat version of Medieval Dynasty and have VR headset and we noticed them when we post something on our social media. They are very active there, they are very positive and so on. But the other group is our players that like uh, survival games and farming games, like doing cozy, not stressing things in the VR, because they are saying that we've got enough of stress in real life, we want to chill while playing or doing some entertainment. So they are the two types of community that we can notice. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Did you make research about who is your player? Is a child? How uh, you mean the age group? Age group. Uh, yeah. Like everyone from 18 to 40, 45. And we've got even done some playtests of the players in this group. And yeah, that's, that's our group. OK, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just thought about another question. What do you think about locomotion inside of VR? Uh, what are possibilities? What are the future for it? Mm -hmm. uh, how we can move, interact with stuff? Uh, I don't know. OK, uh, the motion sickness is a common problem, really. When I first tried VR like five, or six years ago, I had motion sickness as well. But now I can play two to three hours without motion sickness. So uh, it's, it's very good progress. Yeah, it's mm. behind me. Generally, motion sickness comes with the hardware we have right now, and then with the comfort settings the game have. You need to move, like teleport, tunnel uh, moving, you know, smooth moving. It just about the two things, comfort settings and hardware there is on the market. And the third thing is, but it's for the hardcore players, the more you play, the less motion sickness you have. Yeah, I noticed it <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, as for me, I tend to switch for 45 degrees uh, rotation uh, mm -hmm. steps, because if we have smooth rotation and smooth movement by joystick, it gets a lot of motion sickness. Yeah, because the brain doesn't know what's going on. Because if you are standing or sitting and the smooth movement uh, tricks the brain uh, really, really fast. It's a good idea. Yeah, it tricks <laughs> a lot. What do you think also about um, 
new technologies like uh, I don't really remember the name. There is a podium that you can wear a special boots and slide on it. I mean, it sounds good, but I guess maybe it's not that worth it. Uh, I don't li really like it. I don't say it's bad or good. It's nothing for me. I tried it for, for a few times, uh, but it's nothing for me. Uh, what I love about standalone headsets is I can take them everywhere I want. If I go and travel somewhere, I, if I'm at my friend's house and we are at the party and I can yeah, open Beat Saber and we are playing the Beat Saber like all people who are there, and the more equipment you have uh, is doing that, you need to stay at home. For me, the most advantage of standalone headset is that you can take it everywhere with you. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's really great. Also, uh, I reminded myself there is, I don't think that it's a new game, uh, but the game itself uh, tricks you to move inside of your room in mm -hmm. a circular pattern all the time. And it gives you different uh, kind of, um, uh, how do you call it? Uh, you need to uh, interact with something uh, okay. to open a door, to press a button, and so. all the time it moves you around the room and you basically move in one uh, meter square. Okay. And I think it's also a kind of cool possibility for uh, future games to uh, understand this ability to mm -hmm. trick the player uh, to move uh, inside of uh, contained space. I mean, yeah. it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds good, it sounds really good, um, because if you are playing any VR headset, you could notice that the Guardian, they are problematic. They are really problematic. On the Quest 3 headset, it works much better than on the other devices, but it's still a small problem. Yeah, so maybe it will be a good solution. Uh, what about uh, tracking fingers, uh, hands, and self? I know so that hand tracking. Yeah, Quest is doing it, but I don't really know about it a lot. It all depends on the mechanics of, that the developers will bring to their games. If you have mm, good mechanics that use the hand tracking, it comes naturally and you don't have any problems. There is a game on the Quest Store, I think it's called Finger Gun, and you are playing just with your hands, no controllers. You definitely should try it. It's a quite good experience. It's an old game. Today it would be made better, but like two years ago when it was released, it was a yeah, nice experience with the finger tracking. What also do you think about uh, AI implementation inside of VR? Uh, I mean, what what solution for it can you? Propose? I don't. I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't personally understand the AI in the games except for building location, so level design. Because when we are talking about the NPCs, that's totally different AI as in your question. But the AI, as we talk in this time, only for generating levels. I don't see any other possibility to use the AI in virtual games and even in the flat games. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> someone else. Okay. Uh, last question from me. Okay. Uh, it will be a strange question. Uh, my hobby is board games and uh, uh, a, little, a little context. Um, in uh, board games, uh, there is a trend, uh, board games with applications uh, or uh, board game with uh, game in Steam. Uh, you need to play a board game and some uh, track resources in the Steam application, something like that. Uh, and I read uh, some forums about uh, dreaming of users uh, of board gamers, uh, and uh, one user uh, proposed to develop a virtual reality application uh, to play uh, Dungeon Dragons, for example, mm -hmm. in uh, reality, uh, or play in other board games uh, with uh, virtual uh, reality uh, soft. 
Uh, is it possible in close future, uh, is it real that uh, such projects will develop in uh, and something like that? Uh, what is your opinion on uh, implementation on virtual reality in uh, real gaming? I think it's uh, possible and in the near future, because when you are talking about board games, uh, you can use the VR headset for mixed reality. So, to be true, you don't even need to have physically the board game uh, on the table, because the master of the game could have uh, the, the board game on his table, and everyone else who has the standalone headset would see the board game in front of them, and they can play it like this. And the other possibility is you have a board game and you are playing, and then you switch to VR to play some situations from the board game and the VR game. So the possibilities are, there are many of them, and I think you will see something in the near future, it's like two to three years. Okay, nice. Thank you very much. I think uh, that if you will have more additional questions, you can catch up uh, exactly. our experts yeah, uh, in uh, our party or uh, something, where, uh, whatever, I don't know. Uh, thank you very much uh, for interesting you, conversation thank about uh, virtual reality. And uh, please uh, rate this uh, session in uh, Pine App and uh, have a good event, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for your attendance and thank you for the questions. Mm -hmm.